I'm Jeremiah DeGullen from the Wisconsin School of Business Center for Professional and Executive Development, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, The Leader's Role in Employee Motivation and Engagement, brought to you by the Wisconsin School of Business. Before we get started, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Sadie Chernica. Sadie? Thanks, Jeremiah. Hi, everybody. My name is Sadie Shernica, and I work in the Alumni Relations Office at the Wisconsin School of Business. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, our office provides engagement activities, events, volunteer opportunities, and then our Edge Up Professional Development Resources, which this webinar is a part of. Um, I wanted to take the time today to mention our biggest event of the year, if we could go to the next slide, please, which is our WSB Homecoming Bash on October 22nd from noon to two. So the bash is a really great time to come back to campus, enjoy a tailgate lunch, bar, fun game day activities, and reconnect um, with your fellow business badgers. So we hope to see you there. Right now we're running a special on the price of our homecoming bash and football tickets for only $75 for a bundle. So you can purchase your tickets now at business.wisc.edu slash alumni slash events. And we'll be sending that info out in the survey after the webinar. So you can look for it there. Jeremiah, I'll pass it back to you. Thanks, Sadie. Today's webinar is also brought to you by the Wisconsin School of Business Center for Professional and Executive Development, CPED for short, offers online and in-person programs and certificates that will give you the modern, relevant skills needed to advance in your career. All of our programs offer interactive learning sessions facilitated by instructors with practical business experience. CPED also partners with organizations to provide customized professional development programs, coaching, and consulting. For more information on the Center for Professional and Executive Development, please visit our website at uwcped.org. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask during today's webinar, you can submit your questions using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We'll post questions that are submitted during a Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. I'll also want to mention that today's webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording and a copy of the presentation will be made available to you within the next few days. And now I'd like to introduce you to our speaker, Vicki Kampmeyer. Vicki? Thanks, Jeremiah. I want to start to engage you in this content by a poll right out of the gate. So Brooke's going to throw up a poll. And what I want you to think about were what were the reasons you left your last job, or you might be thinking about leaving your current role and click all that apply. Nobody's going to see your individual answers. So just be honest. So what were the reasons you left your last job or maybe thinking about leaving your current role? Can check all that apply. And Brooke, you let me know when that poll has enough responses to close it. All right. So 32% of you said you no longer feel challenged. 32% said better pay and benefits. 41% said my boss or management. 45% of you said feeling burnt out and unappreciated. 23% said toxic company culture. 14% said lack of healthy work-life boundaries. And 14% said lack of flexible work options. There's a lot of reasons why people leave their organizations. Interestingly, in a 2020 Gallup survey, it showed 54% of employees quit their jobs because of their boss. Let me give you a couple of real life examples here around that. I have a friend named Jane and she turned in her letter of resignation to her manager. The manager said he was surprised and wanted to know what he could to make her stay. And Jane told him that she wasn't looking, but she got an offer she couldn't refuse. And he didn't probe. And she also didn't share the truth. And the truth was that he made her and her coworkers all miserable. So two days later, he came back with a better offer. He was willing to give her more money. 
And the bottom line, it wasn't about the money. It was about a to toxic atmosphere that wasn't going to change. So she left. I had dinner with another friend last week and she loves the flexibility she has with her new job. She's been in that role now for about six months. And she left because she wanted more flexibility. But right now, she doesn't feel connected to the organization she's with. She doesn't feel what she's doing is meaningful. So she's actually talking about going back to her previous employer. Again, less flexibility, but she felt more connected, a sense of community, and that the work that she did had purpose and it aligned to her purpose. So again, there are so many reasons we leave our jobs. Today, I'm gonna to help you understand maybe how you can get re-engaged or if you have direct reports, how you can get them re-engaged and motivated in your workplace. So let's talk more specifically about what I want you to walk away with today. So we hear a lot of terms in the workplace. We hear employee satisfaction, we hear about employee motivation, we hear about engagement. Are they the same or are they different? They actually are different. I'm gonna talk about those subtle differences today. Then I'm gonna talk about the return on investment. Why does it matter to focus on employee motivation and engagement? And then lastly, what can you do about it? You come to webinars like this to walk away with a nugget or two to help you back on the job. I definitely wanna give that to you today. And to start, I'm gonna ask you to take some action. I want you to think right now about all of your employees. Do you think they're all motivated and engaged? And if you don't have direct reports, that's okay. Think about your own motivation and engagement. You'll just you'll get just enough uh, as much out of it thinking about it from that perspective as well. The other thing I want to share before we dive into the content is learning to motivate employees is easier in theory than in reality, mainly because knowledge is useless without application. So I want you to work hard at taking those nuggets, writing them down today. If it's one or two, perfect, because I want you to apply that when we're done with the webinar today. So again, we, I can give you a lot of information, but unless you walk away with something tangible to apply right away, it's an hour lost of your day. So again, try to think about how you can apply this content back to your role or for yourself. So let's talk about the definitions. So employee satisfaction, engagement, motivation, what do they really mean? So employee satisfaction, is it about a sense, a personal sense of happiness at work? So are you getting what you want, such as your desired salary, perks, and so forth from your employer? Let me give you an example here. If you believe your role should be paid $50,000 a year because you've done your market research, if you're not receiving that, it's going to impact your personal status or your employee satisfaction. Or consider the employee who comes to work each morning and leaves immediately at quitting time. This employee is probably satisfied, but they're not likely engaged. Employee engagement and employee motivation are very similar, but they don't mean the same thing. Engagement is a sense of purpose, belonging, and commitment to the organization. One of the top predictors of employee engagement is the alignment with an organization's vision, mission, and values. Similar to the story of my friend earlier, she didn't feel connected to her new organization's purpose and is going to go back thinking about going back to her old organization who she did feel more committed to the purpose of that organization. Employee motivation is about getting something in return for your efforts. Employees are motivated by the prospect of getting a bonus, a perk, a benefit, recognition. They may even be motivated to take on more responsibilities and get promoted. Let me tell you another quick story. And you're going to find that I tell a lot of stories when I teach because I think it actually brings the content to life. So I had a friend, who, this was about a year ago, who told me that they got a new CEO for their organization. And they did in an employee engagement and motivation survey. And when they did the readout, they found in the comments, there were a lot of employees who said they just weren't engaged anymore. And instead of that leader saying, what can we do about it as a leadership team to re-engage folks? His response was, we need to find those people and move them out of the organization. What do you think that did to all those leaders that are now working for this person regarding their engagement and motivation, right? You know, crash and burn. So you have to think about how are you engaging and motivation, motivating your employees? That's a leadership responsibility. And we're going to talk about that today. 
So bear with me here and listen very intently because I'm going to give you some examples because you can have an employee who's satisfied, but not motivated or engaged. So that employee may be satisfied with their compensation and friends at work, but they don't give any discretionary effort. They just get by. In that case, they're satisfied, but they're not motivated or engaged. You could have an employee who's engaged, but not motivated. They have formed work bonds and believe in the overall mission, but there's no direct incentive for them to contribute as an individual when they already derive a sense of accomplishment from group activities. Or you can have somebody who's highly motivated, but not actively engaged. Motivated, disengaged employees are likely to leave the company in search of a better opportunity or simply another employer, employer with better engagement strategies. Um, and we'll talk more about those motivation factors more in depth in a moment. So how do you make sure your employees are motivated? For the sake of this webinar, I'm going to assume your employees are satisfied with their comp and benefits and other things that keep employees satisfied in your workplace. I am going to focus on engagement and motivation today. So let's start talking about the numbers. This is a Gallup survey and Gallup measures employee engagement by asking random samples of the working population about specific workplace elements that link to many organizational outcomes, including profitability, productivity, customer service, retention, safety, and overall well-being. Gallup also asks about things like clarity of expectations, opportunities for development, and opinions at work. When you look at this survey, just over 57,000 employees were surveyed. Engaged employees, which is the green line on the chart, or 34%, are involved in and enthusiastic about their work and workplace. Actively disengaged employees, which is the blue line, is at 16%. They're disgruntled and disloyal because most of their workplace needs are unmet. So data illustrates engaged employees too perform better, uh, they experience less burnout, and they stay in organizations longer. I'm going to give you some numbers now to substantiate the importance of focusing on employee engagement and motivation. So additional Gallup um, data, employees that feel supported and engaged stick around. Businesses that score in the top 20% for engagement see a 41% reduction in absenteeism and 59% less turnover. With the great resignation, a lot of organizations are feeling the pain of attracting and retaining talent. Businesses are having to shorten hours or hang closed sign on their doors because they can't find help. I was at a favorite restaurant this, this weekend and they had a waiting list, but when you walked into their dining room, it was pretty empty. They could only fill so many tables because they didn't have enough people to work there. And the owner who typically is out there talking to their patrons was in the kitchen doing the dishes because they can't find help. So focusing on engagement and motivation practices will definitely benefit any organization. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the cost of turnover. So the Society of Human Resource Management says the cost of turnover for a position is 90 to 200% of someone's salary. So let's do some math here. And I'm gonna tell you right now that 90 to 200% depends on the level of the person in the organization. So 90%, let's assume that's an exempt, entry level exempt position and 200% can be an executive level position. So let's do some math here. If we have 50 people who have tur turned over in our organization in the last year, and let's say on average, they make 60,000 a year, and it's those entry-level staff folks, right? So I'm gonna use the 90%. If I take 50, 50 people times $54,000 a year, which is the 90% of the 60,000, it's $2.7 million a year. That's my cost of turnover. Now you're probably wondering, Vicki, how do you get at that 90 to 200%? Well, think about all the costs that are at play here. You've got recruitment uh, costs, which is advertising, job boards, your recruiters, you've got onboarding costs, you've got lost pro productivity until that person departs. You have other employees and managers having to fill in. You've got interview time of those involved in the hiring process. You've got training time of others to get people up to speed. So when I say you're losing $2.7 million a year for 50 people that turn over, and again, you can do the math for your own organization, it makes sense to take some of those dollars to focus on 
employment, employee engagement and motivation strategies. For the second bullet point, organizations with engaged employees outperform others by 147%. The term used for those willing to give that extra effort is discretionary effort. Its effect on organizations can be profound. If you have 10 direct reports and they each give 10% additional effort, the net results of that additional effort are increased productivity. So it makes sense to focus again on your engagement strategies. 48% of employees are actively looking for a job or willing to consider a new job. LinkedIn, I'll tell you what, makes it so easy for recruiters to reach out to your employees. And employees not feeling engaged with their work will move for little or no pay increase. So you want when a, you want it an environment. So when a recruiter reach out, reaches out to their your people, they're not interested. When I was working um, before I retired from the organization that I was at, I would get pinged from recruiters and I would just simply tell them, look, I am not actively looking. I love what I do. My employer treats me really well. I'm super engaged. It's like a playground for me. I get to work on great projects. I work with great people, not looking to leave. That's what you want your employees to say to a recruiter who's knocking on their door. And then disengaged employees cost the world $7.6 trillion a year in lost productivity. So a lot of data to illustrate the importance of focusing on employee motivation and engagement. So you want both. You want to create an environment where team members are both engaged and motivated. Motivated employees are likely to work harder, develop better ideas, and generally become an asset, an asset to your organization. Unmotivated employees can drag the whole team down. And I think you can identify that in your workplace. You sometimes have those team members that are bringing folks down and the leader isn't doing anything about it, right? That's gonna cause your motivated employees to likely at some point look outside the organization because you're not dealing with the issue at hand. So whose job is it anyway for to motivate an employees? Guess what? And you guys in your poll earlier identified this, right? A lot of you are disengaged because of a manager. Gallup says 70% of the variance in team and individual engagement is determined solely by the manager. So you can make a difference. So what's changed? The workplace has shifted. The work dynamics and expectations have changed. It used to be about my paycheck. Now it's all about my purpose. Those generations coming into the organization or into the workforce, it's all about purpose. And they want to align that purpose with the organization's purpose. It used to be about my satisfaction. Now it's about my development. How is this organization going to help me develop? Because guess what? If they don't, I'll find an organization that does. It used to be about my boss. Now it's about my coach. I want to have regular conversations with my coach in the organization to help me be better. It used to be about my annual review. Now it's all about ongoing conversations. Employees want more frequent conversations with their managers which makes sense, right? Managers, you make the difference. So it's important to engage with your uh, employees in conversation. It used to be about my weaknesses. How do I develop my weaknesses? That's what your boss would typically talk about. Now it's about how are you going to leverage my strengths? And it used to be about my job. Now it's about my life. And we used to talk about work-life balance. The generations coming into the workplace are all about life-work balance. So if those work dynamics and expectations have changed, then how we lead needs to change as well. So let's talk about what are the signs motivation is lacking. You can have higher rates of employee absenteeism. You've got people showing up late or getting a slower start to the day. Maybe it's someone who's only doing the bare minimum required for the job, and that's not the way it used to be. Maybe they're not contributing to projects or team meetings, or they used to be one of your strongest people that are contributing in those projects and team meetings, and that's not happening anymore. Maybe you see people withdrawing from their coworkers. Maybe it's a mood or attitude change. It could be de decreased employee pro productivity or acting bored or not caring about their work. There's a lot of signs, and as leaders, we need to pay attention to those signs. And I want you to think about yourself or your own employees and the factors that I just shared. Where do you fit in and where do you think your employees, have you noticed any change in their behavior? I do some executive coaching and the, one of the VPs I was working with, I noticed his language was changing. He didn't seem to be as engaged he used to. His attitude was shifting and how he was talking just didn't seem to care 
the way he used to. And I mentioned to him, I noticed a shift in him and what was going on. And he unloaded. His motivation was no longer there. He still believed in the purpose of his organization, but his company had grown. There was more bureaucracy. He didn't feel like his voice mattered anymore. And so he was actually talking about leaving. So again, if I can pick up those signs in someone I meet with in a, on an infrequent basis, you should be able to pick up these signs in your employees as well. So right now, here's our second poll. How would you rate your current engagement and motivation at work? How would you rate yourself? Are you very disengaged? Are you somewhat disengaged? Yeah, I'm somewhere in between. I'm partially engaged or I'm very engaged. How would you rate your motivation and engagement? All right, good news is nobody's very disengaged. 4%, uh, I'm somewhat disengaged. 36%, you're kind of on the fence. 25% is partially engaged. And great news, 36% of you are very engaged. So it's important to know where you stand. And again, not only for yourself, but where do you think your employees are with their current motivation and engagement? I wanna talk about now two types of motivation. There's intrinsic and there's extrinsic motivation. And as managers, you need to understand the difference and provide both types to effectively motivate employees. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give, we have all kinds of different learning styles. I'm going to give you some words to put around that. Then I'm going to give you a visual. Then I'm going to give you examples. And then I'm going to tell you what you can do about those. All right. So first of all, intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is the internal drive in an employee feels. When employees are intrinsically motivated, performing their uh, work roles is inherently satisfying to them. Satisfaction might take the shape of overcoming a challenge, enthusiasm for the work itself, or a sense of pride in contributing to a worthy goal. Extrinsic motivators can be short-term, like a prize for a top-performing employee of the month, or long-term, uh, such as a prospective raise or promotion. Because intrinsic motivation is connected with specific tangible outcomes, however, its effect tends to be temporary. That means managers need to continuously reevaluate and update those extrinsic motivators. So intrinsic comes from within. It's driven by close held beliefs and values such as acceptance, honor, desire to achieve, and curiosity. It makes you feel good without an external award. So internal, external. So here's a visual that I think will help you even get more clarity on the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So again, extrinsic motivation is where you're driven by things outside of you, such as money, status, praise. So if you're extrinsically motivated, you're more likely to be highly motivated by getting thousands of likes, for instance, on your Facebook page. Um, you don't mind if you uh, enjoy the process, right? Your drivers are an external reward or outcome. For intrinsic motivation, things like enjoyment, purpose, growth, curiosity, et cetera, you're driven by the internal things, um, such as a feeling of that accomplishment. So perhaps you're running a coaching business like me because you love helping people reach their true potential. The reward is the thing that you're doing, all right? So the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic. So now let me give you some examples and then what can you do about it? So intrinsic motivation examples. You stay at work because you believe in the work that you're doing. You work as a team because you love collaboration. You learn about personal development because you want to improve yourself. You're studying because you're curious about the topic at hand and you're trying to be a good leader because you want to inspire. So what can you do about these things? First of all, get to know your employees' interests. Employees are more motivated to work on projects that they are genuinely interested in. Managers need to spend time learning about their team's skills and interests to know which tasks are best suited to each team member. Employees should be able to play to their strengths, give them opportunities to grow and learn that benefit them and your company. Encourage personal projects. Industry leaders recognize how important it is to let their employees explore explore. Companies like 3M and Google allocate a certain percentage of employee time to employee pet projects. The initiative is not only provides that intrinsic motivation, 
but historically has resulted in major projects. For 3M and Google, some of those were Gmail and AdSense. By letting those employees work on, a, on per personal pro projects, you never know what might come up. Put every task into the broader context. Employees work harder when they know their work matters. A great way to encourage intrinsic motivation is to tie all assignments, no matter the size, to the larger mission or vision of your organization. When an employee understands the big picture and their role in it, their work takes on greater significance and becomes more satisfying. If my friend who is thinking about leaving, leaving her job because there's no tie or purpose, if a manager would take the time to probably put her work in that broader context, she might feel more connected. Tailor the work to the employee's career stage. Motivation is personal even when you're working toward a collective goal. For instance, a new hire fresh out of college is likely motivated by very different factors than an employee three, three years away from retirement. Identifying what drives employees both day in and in the long term makes it much easier to figure out which work will motivate them the most. All right, now we're gonna talk about extrinsic. Uh, motivation and examples. So here's some examples. You go to work because you want to earn money. You're helping others because you hope for praise. You want that limelight. You volunteer because you know it's a good resume builder. You go to new places because you want to post on social media. It's all about the limelight, right? That's what's motivate, motivating you, external people noticing things. Pursuing a degree because you want to make your parents proud. That's not about you. It's something else outside of you going on a business trip because your boss ordered you to do so. Those are all extrinsic motivation examples. So what can you do for someone regarding extrinsic motivation? First, provide specific guidelines for incentives. While a monthly prize draw might be a cost-effective cost way to reward top performers, it's not a very strong motivator because they still need to rely on luck to get the reward they've been working towards. So I'm talking about in this case, Right, We're all working towards something. We get our name in a hat for something we do, but we're still relying on luck. Not a strong incentive for someone who's extrinsically motivated. You still have to rely on luck. So incentive programs should be clearly outlined with benchmarks so that employees have something to aim for with a guaranteed outcome. So I have a son who works for an organization and he's in sales and every quarter the bogey changes. In fact, sometimes they get frustrated because the bogey isn't told to them after the quarter. They're still working out the details and the new thresholds for them. So he's so frustrated, he's starting to passively look. Again, for someone who's extrinsically motivated, he needs those guidelines and he needs them in advance so he knows what his target is. Praise employees on their terms. Some, some employees like public recognition while others respond best to direct feedback from their manager out of the spotlight. We all tend to give recognition and rewards like we want to be given, right? But we have to understand what do our employees want? It's not about us. So whether you're motivating your employee with praise or a gift, give them some flexibility as how they can be rewarded. If you're rewarding employees with a physical item, give them options, right? Here's three things to choose from. Also, Think about this, if you do your job day in and day out, and I'm sure some of you can relate to this and you never hear anything about it, you're doing a great job, Jeremiah, here's what you're doing, right? You'll start to question the value of what you're doing. Reward employees with an improved workplace experience. So what does that mean? Now more than ever, employees are looking for flexible hours and remote work options. Managers should be looking for opportunities to reward top performers with more control over their own time and workload. So employees always appreciate, for example, addition, additional vacation days, or depending upon the industry, your solid performers, your top performers could be given the cho their choice on upcoming projects to work on. So reward employees with an improved workplace experience. Another piece is celebrating milestones. When we talk about extrinsic motivators, we often focus on performance and productivity-based incentives, but sometimes offering extra perks to those who stay with the company long-term is a great way to combat turnover. Celebrate milestones. So I'm gonna do another poll here. If you have direct reports, and I know that's not everybody on the call, but for those of you who do, which do you think you need to focus on understanding more with your employees? Is it intrinsic motivators, extrinsic motivators, 
or both. I now understand what it is and I need to focus on both. All right, so 27% of you said I need to focus more on the intrinsic motivators, 3% said extrinsic, and 70% of you said both, I realize I have some work to do, right? Sometimes we go through work and we talk about, yeah, we know we need to motivate our employees, but understanding there's actually definitions and a science behind it um, helps us as leaders. So again, intrinsic and extrinsic, right? Understanding what makes and motivate our employees tick, what motivates them. So how can you motivate employees? I'm gonna give you some techniques now, um, and I'm actually gonna give you 11 of them. So how to mo your, motivate your employees? First of all, ask them for feedback. And I, before I actually start on these 11, what I wanna say is this isn't rocket science. It goes back to what we talked about earlier when we know these things in theory, but sometimes we forget to do them, right? We need to apply what we know. So here we go, how to motivate them. Ask them for their feedback. The sig this signals to the employee that their words and feelings matter. They grow more vocal about the issues and processes and acted upon them can unearth insights that can help teams streamline their work better. Regular feedback keeps work on track, develops deeper relationships, and enables managers to coach in the moment. Make the art of giving and receiving feedback your superpower. Let me say that again. Make the art of giving and receiving feedback your superpower. You have to get comfortable with that. Give them freedom of choice. Remember what it was like to drive a car for the first time, right? It felt like absolute freedom. Didn't have to worry about mom and dad in the car with you anymore. Here you go. What if you were able to make employees feel that same sort of fulfillment at work? Good news, you can. When employees experience true freedom of choice, they put more energy and effort into their work. They no longer feel anxious or worried about being watched. When employees feel like they have a choice in the matter, their motivation and willingness to get work done will inherently increase. Autonomy is critical to fostering intrinsic motivation. So give them freedom of choice. Minimize meetings for greater productivity. I think we all go to meetings and we're like, oh, here we go again. We're not gonna get anything done in this meeting or why are we still having this meeting? But yet we still go. A Harvard Business Review survey found that 65% of senior managers felt meetings take away from their ability to complete their work with 71% of, 71 of them feeling the meetings were an unprodu unproductive and inefficient use of their time. Time spent in meetings could easily be spent working on projects and investing in relationship building. So if we feel that way as leaders, that we feel meetings aren't productive, how do you think our employees feel, the ones that feel like they really can't make a difference in those meetings? So we need to think about how do we eliminate these meetings or how do we make them better? Provide resources for continued professional and personal growth. When employees feel the company they work for is willing to invest in them and their personal growth, those employees will be more inclined to invest their time and energy to work even harder for the company. Employee development is a key lever to employee engagement, one of the top. So make sure you're investing in your people to grow and develop them. And then engage employees in setting individual and company goals. Usually the company sets their goals and it cascades to the individual and we tell them, here's your goals for the year. But research indicates setting goals can increase productivity by 11 to 25%. So when employees feel they're part of that conversation, they're willing to put in the extra effort when they need to complete a task, finish a job, or go above and beyond their regular line of responsibilities to be a team player. So when the employee and company reach their individual goals, a sense of personal and professional fulfillment occurs, creating a shift in momentum the business can use to propel individuals and the company in, into even more growth and development. So engage your employees in individual and company goals setting. So here's some more. These are the last six I'm gonna share with you on how to motivate. Let them know you care. 
Caring is much more than saying thank you, although that's a great place to start. Caring about employees means genuinely listening to their feedback, providing them options and alternatives with choosing how they want to work, and allowing them to make decisions on their behalf freely. Also, caring about them as individuals, not just a resource. Empathy is one of the most important qualities of a great leader. I think you have all heard of Stephen Covey, who said, seek to understand before being understood. When you seek to understand, it removes guesswork and allows leaders to act in an informed and precise way. It builds trust. It shows that companies when, they, when companies genuinely care, engagement skyrockets. So let your employees know you care. Give praise in uh, public, critique in private. Duh, right? <laughs> but I think we've all experienced the spine tingling secondhand embarrassment of being in the same room as someone who is scolded by a superior. It's horrific and it's preventable. What do you think that does to employee morale? What do you think that does to team morale when that happens? Do these sort of antics facilitate taking calculated risks, challenging the status quo, or provide motivation for progress? Heck no. Managers need to give feedback. How you do it matters. So again, I go back to get really good at giving feedback. Be transparent. Transparency produces trust. The more an employee can trust you, the greater their motivation will build. And if I go back to that first poll where a lot of you are um, disconnected or disgruntled because of your boss, there's probably a lack of trust there. The openness in which you're sharing information is crucial for creating clarity, certainty, and trust. When employees feel out of the loop, what happens is they become uncertain. And the more uncertainty they feel, the less motivated they are. Invest in learning to talk with people not at them. Learn what makes each employee operate is another tactic. It's common to focus on team building and motivation. Usually time sensitive leaders use motivation, team motivation to get the job done, motivate staff and save time in the process, right? Let me do it all at once. People love being part of a team, but they also love personalized attention. It's something special when your leader takes the time to build you up personally instead of it making it a group activity. Use one-on-one -on -one coaching where you encourage the employee, give them pointers about growth, and acknowledge their contributions. When you do this, you'll find that your employee will become highly motivated. I have a daughter-in-law where this is really big for her. She likes the team stuff, but she wants to be motivated individually by her manager. And when that relationship is not there and she's not having that level of dialogue, she becomes disconnected um, with the organization and her boss. And so... She and I have talked through strategies like you need then to take the first step forward to have that conversation with your boss and be transparent about what you need. And she did that and they've got a, a much better working relationship now and she feels much more valued. Learn what makes each employee operate. One of the best ways to increase employee motivation is through learning personality types like DISC, using DISC or MBTI. They offer valuable insights that can be leveraged for growth, motivation, and alignment. So have conversation about these tools. Getting to know people in your department will increase motivation. As an example for this, um, I use Discover Your Strengths with my team. So we did it individually, and then we had dialogue about how our strengths came out. And you get your top five strengths when you do that. And we literally had great dialogue. They got a lot of motivation out of it. They posted those outside of their cube so they have regular dialogue. And they loved it so much learning about each other that we made it um, a, a annual thing where we would pull that back out and have conversation about our strengths. So taking time to learn and unpack each personality type is a gateway into a bond of loyalty that will drive motivation for years to come, similar to what I did with my team. That was that. Again, we paid spades. We used that for several years. And lastly, be inclusive. If 2020 and 2021 taught us anything, it's that people desire to be included. Each movement was an outcry saying, we've been forgotten. If people are starting these movements, movements nationally, you can bet they're happening within your organization's ecosystem. Instead of fearing the conversations, engage in it. It's not about agreeing with people. It's about being listened to and heard. If a person doesn't feel heard or included in your organization, this lack of connection has serious ramifications. 
Not being included can lead to loneliness, depression, anger, detachment. And we all know if an individual is going through these emotions, that lack of most motivation will carry through to their task. So be inclusive. That's why a lot of organizations have started employee resource groups. So people feel a connectedness. So again, 11 different ways to motivate your employees. Managers need to be equipped to have ongoing conversations with employees, but unfortunately, most don't know how to do that. And their actions then are interpreted as micromanaging. So I'm going to share with you the importance of having conversations with your employees. So I went to a conference called Fierce Conversations, and they wrote this simple formula up on the board, which was C equals R. And what it stood for was conversation equals relationship. You cannot have a relationship with someone without having conversation. So again, engage with your employees, have conversations, build those relationships. So improving employee engagement doesn't mean complicated employment engagement strategies. Sometimes it's as simple as asking the right questions to yield valuable responses. Engaging employees is all about showing them that, they're, that you're there to support them in their personal and professional development so that they can feel proud of their active contributions to the larger organizational goals. So what I'm going to share with you now are questions that can help you monitor employee engagement, questions that can help you establish a connection with your employees, then how can you improve employee engagement through questions and uncover information, and then about their career goals and aspirations. So I'm going to share lists of questions with you. I'm not going to go through each question, um, but I think you'll find these questions eye-opening and thinking about, do I ask these types of questions or don't I? If these questions resonate with you, I would just challenge you to take a picture with your camera phone so that you can use them back on the job with your employees. If you're taking this webinar and you don't have direct reports, think about yourself and how you would answer these questions, all right? So let's get started. So here's questions to understand employee engagement. So you could ask, what motivates you to come to work every day? What's your favorite part of your job? What are the things you've done at this company that you're proudest of? On a scale of one to 10, how happy are you at work? What are you working on that you don't want to work on, right? Understanding what tasks may just frustrate the heck out of somebody. And there's, is there some way to restructure that? Now, the other thing I'm going to say about these questions is when you have a meeting with employees and you want to ask them some of these, send a couple of them, not here's all 10 questions I want to ask you, but here are some questions I'd like to have some meaningful dialogue with you on, right? I really want to talk about your engagement. I want to make sure you're engaged here at work. And I would suggest, again, sending those in advance, because if you ask these questions in the moment, you're not going to get a thoughtful response. So if I have a one-on-one -on -one coming up, I would normally send the questions that I want to engage in deeper dialogue with the employee about. So those are some questions that you can ask to understand employee engagement. How do you uncover that? It's through dialogue. Then we have some questions that help establish a connection with employees. This gets scary for some leaders. I don't want to tread on people's personal life. Guess what? People bring their whole selves to work. So they want to talk about themselves and they'll share what they want, right? If you're getting too personal, they'll just, again, just dance over the question. So here's some questions to establish a connection. How's life outside of work? What kind of hobbies do you do outside of work? Did you do anything fun and memorable this weekend? What are some of your personal goals this year? So again, just questions that can help you establish a connection with your employees. Don't be the, the leader who just dives right into the task at hand. Develop some rapport with your, your employees by asking just a simple question at the start of a meeting. You'll never know where that conversation goes. Questions to improve employee engagement. Are there projects you'd really like to work on? Would you like more or less direction or feedback from me? Are there any aspects of our team culture you wish you could change? And so forth. So you can see, again, there's some questions here. The last one I've used quite a bit in my work and with teams. What should we start doing, stop doing, and continue doing as a team or an organization? You will be surprised at the amount of information you get 
from just that simple question. So again, you want to ask these questions to engage your employees, right? Get their perspective. You'll learn a lot and probably make some work changes because of their feedback. Then there's questions about career goals and aspirations. So what do you love doing the most in your work? Do you feel like you're advancing in your career? What are some things you could do to work towards that goal? What have you learned in, or improved recently, right? You wanna hear from them that they're continuing to grow and develop. Are there other opportunities here you would like to explore? When employees feel that they have a means to grow with the company that they're working at, they feel more invested in the company's future. It's absolutely necessary to ask your employees questions about career goals and aspirations if you want them to feel engaged, motivated, and interested in their work. I have worked with so many leaders in the past who couldn't articulate the career aspirations and development goals of their employees. Get to know your employees. I've also worked with managers who have said, if I develop them, they're going to leave. You know what I say to that? Good. If they leave to another opportunity in the organization, you've done your job as a leader. Your job should be to feed the organization with great talent. If they choose to leave and go outside of the organization, know you had a handle on developing them, that that development that you gave them probably helped the organization in some way, and hopefully someday they'll come back. If you want to ask, uh, uh, encourage new ideas, here's some questions that you can ask. Are there any new ideas you'd like to discuss with me or the team? What do you need to develop that idea further so it's ready to discuss with the broader team? How can I help, right? Involve them in the encouragement of new ideas or be really interested in the projects that they're working on. As time goes by, goes by many of us, tend to get stuck in our routine, specific methodologies and approaches in the business. Your employees are an asset to you in several different ways. One being that each person brings a different perspective and skill set to the table. And it's in a smart engagement strategy to ask your team questions that encourage the development of new ideas because they can help you and the business innovate and improve existing processes that might be out of date. So ask your questions to, or your employees questions to encourage the development of new ideas. And lastly, ask your uh, employees questions about employee productivity and priorities. Are you clear what their top priorities are, are right now? Are they aligned with what you think are their top priorities right now? Um, what percentage of their time do they spend in meetings versus doing deep work? Do you give them time to work on deep work or pet projects? You could ask them, what do you uh, like to spend your time on? What would you like to spend less time on? How do you plan your week, right? Just questions about employee productivity and priorities. As a manager, you're already a master probably at prioritizing tasks. When it comes where it might come easily to you, it's important to ask your employees how they feel about their productivity and how they identify and rank their priorities. Get to know how your employees work. So again, a lot of lists of different questions to engage in dialogue with your employees, because at the end of the day, conversation equals relationship. Those conversations breed trust. It helps you identify what motivates them, what's important to them, keep them engaged. And this is just a summary. If you don't want to take those lists, don't worry about it. But this came from a book written by Steve King. It's called Six Conversations, A Simple Guide for Managerial Success. So ask, ask these questions. This is what employees care about. Do I know what is expected of me? Do I know how I'm going to develop? Do I know how I'm doing? Do I know how uh, I did, right? If I'm working on a project, how will I be rewarded, rewarded and what is next for me? So engage with dialogue around these questions. So each one of these somewhat aligns with those questions that I just shared with you. But that's a great book. If you want a great book about conversations with your employees and what's important, I would encourage you to pick Steve's book up. Lastly, I want to talk about what kills motivation. First of all, micromanaging. Micromanaging is a form of mistrust. For the micromanager, it's all about control. The more they control, the safer they feel. However, the greater control they exert, the more your employees feel mistrusted, mistreated, and undervalued. I'm sure some of you out there are smiling right now and can relate to this. When your employees feel like this, their motivation drops and the business suffers. 
How would you feel if someone was watching your every move or looked at every detail, demanded regular updates, wanted to be CC'd on every email of yours that went out? It would kill your motivation and you'd, you'd either stay and quit or you'd start looking for a new opportunity. It goes back to the old adage, people don't leave a job, they leave a boss. Lack of systems and structures also kills motivation. So the purpose of systems and structures is to create a work environment that builds motivation and promotes productivity. When systems or processes are complex or lacking or structures continually change, they increase stress levels. And when stress levels increase, motivation fails. That lack of systems and structures goes back to my son's situation where they don't have systems and structures in place that are the same. So they have different regions and they move their sales reps around to the different regions and every region has different systems and structures. So very confusing for them. And again, their bogey is always changing. So that increases their stress level. Unclear expectations. We all carry expectations on how things should work. There's a high percentage of leaders who, who have a high level of expectations without ever sharing what that those level of expectations are. And in fact, millions of employees have a standard that they're unclear how to achieve. The most motivated employees are those that know what the target is. Employees are demotivated when those expectations are not clear and ultimately look for a new position elsewhere. So we've talked about things that um, motivate employees. I also wanted to share these things that kill motivation. So in summary, I wanted you to walk away with today an understanding of what's the difference between employee satisfaction, motivation, and engagement. I hope that uh, you walked away with that understanding today. We talked about the ROI. Why is it important to focus on employee motivation and engagement? And then lastly, what you can do about, about it. So hopefully you have a nugget or two that you can take back and utilize back on the job. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jeremiah. But before I do, Jeremiah, if you wanna connect with me, I just wanna say you can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have questions or you wanna chat, you can reach out to me on email or personally just give me a call. I'm always happy to talk about uh, topics that I'm passionate about. So Jeremiah. Thank you, Vicki, that was wonderful. Um, with that, we're going to open it up for questions. Again, you can submit your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, Vicki, I was wondering if I've realized I, I need to get up on my conversations with employees, yeah. what is a way to introduce this? So my employees would be shocked if I start this really out of nowhere. Yeah. So it goes back, we talked about being transparent with your employees. I would actually acknowledge, I think when you're transparent and vulnerable, that is a trust breeder. So Jeremiah, what I would do in that situation is just simply say, I recognize that I haven't engaged with you guys as much as I should. And we need to have more meaningful dialogue to make sure that you're working on the right things, that you're engaged, that we're developing you. So you're gonna see me up that cadence. Um, because again, I wanna be a better leader for you. I would just be transparent. Wonderful. Thank you for the advice. Yeah. So having more conversations with employees sounds nice, but some uh, leaders just don't have the time. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Yeah. And this is going to sound a little blunt, but you can't afford not to. That's the bottom line. And if you're engaging your employees because and you don't think you can spend the time, it's probably because you're not leveraging your employees the way you could. And if they leave, it's just going to be this constant gerbil wheel, right? Because if they're not engaged, they're going to turn over. You're going to spend more time training people. It's a vicious cycle. So my advice to that is you got to figure out a way. And sometimes when you have those conversations, you can say, is there anything on my plate that you'd like to take on that will help with your growth and development? You'll be surprised at what they'll say to you. Thank you, Vicki. Yeah. There's the old saying, um, if you can't measure it, you can't expect it. Yeah. How can I measure employee engagement other than a conversation? So how will I know if we as an organization are succeeding? Yeah, so a lot of organizations um, do surveys to measure the engagement. There's a lot of tools out there. Just pick one that will work for your organization. Um, 
you can create your own surveys with information you gather out, you know, because if you Google like employee engagement questions, you'll get some, you can create your own survey if you want. What I will say to that though, is if you ask for people's input and you do nothing with it, they're going to stop giving it. So the worst thing you can do is measure it, ask for opinions, and then do nothing with it. That will do more damage to the engagement and motivation. So if you're going to do one and you truly want to measure it and then put some engagement strategies in place, see if you're moving the needle, you got to do something with the feedback. Great. We have another question here. Um, how can I determine if my employees are more intrinsic or extrinsically motivated? Yeah, questions, right? And through dialogue, if you're really having those meaningful conversations with your employees, you're going to pick up on their language and you can even ask them what motiv right? What motivates you at work? Just simply ask the question. But for some reason, sometimes we're scared of asking the questions. Maybe it's because we don't want to hear it. I don't know. But at the end of the day, just ask and then listen to what they're saying. Look at what they do at work, right? That will, you'll pick up on the language. You'll be able to, just, now that you know what the difference is, you should be able to pick up on those things, whether it's intrinsic or extrinsic. Wonderful. And we have one last question here. Yeah. Um, Vicki, so many leaders find themselves not only being the leader to a team or uh, an organization, but also having to be you know, led by someone. Do you have any recommendations for leaders that are being on the receiving end of that micromanaging mm. leader? Yeah, I think it's one of those situations where you manage up, right? And it's about having the same type of vulnerable conversations with that leader. So if they're micromanaging, you could say something like, I want to let you know that um, on this particular project, you were asking these questions. And I want to let you know that it's making fe me feel a little bit like you're micromanaging. Is it that you don't trust me? Is there something I need to be doing differently? How can I have more flexibility on a go forward basis? So it's about having the courage to have that type of dialogue. Um, but you've got to, unless you have that conversation with them, nothing's ever going to change. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes we just have to step outside of our comfort zone. Absolutely. Well, Becky, thank you so much for sharing your expertise today. We really yeah. appreciate it. And uh, before we end, I wanted to remind you that today's webinar was recorded and you will be provided a link and copies of the slides. So on behalf of everyone at the Wisconsin School of Business, thank you for attending today's webinar.